Good morning guys. Today's video I'm going to go over starting a business and some of the troubles I went through getting started and how rewarding it can be. Let me start by introducing myself. My name's Curtis. My wife and I own a small HVAC business down here in South Georgia where I do primarily all the work. I do have help with my change outs but um that video is coming. I kind of stumble through some of it, so bear with me. I hope I can give you some good information and some encouragement to do something like this yourself. Here it goes. All right, let me get started by saying that starting a business, um, especially in HVAC, that's what I'm experienced with, is not for everybody. It requires a lot of work. My first couple of years, I was working 12, 14 hours a day. You know, when I had the business, I guess when I first started though, it was hard to get the business. But when the business started coming in, I was working terribly long hours every day, doing my own change outs, and doing all the service work, all the paperwork, answering the phone, everything. It is hard work. If you think you're going to start a business and not have to work, you know, that that's not a reality. Even now, after 12 years, I still basically work from 7 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock at night. I try to come home at 5, but I still have to do invoices, paperwork, estimates, scheduling, calling customers, billing out, all of that still goes on well after five o'clock. I do want to tell you that in the beginning, I could not have started the business without my wife. I went basically the first couple of years not paying myself. I paid myself probably $4,000 in those two years and every penny I made just kept going back into the company. For example, outfitting a van can cost twelve to $14,000, and I didn't have that kind of money, so every time I needed a part for a job, I would buy two. That way I'd have one for the job and one to put on the van, and I was slowly building my stock and putting money back in the company. If I had a little extra, I might buy some extra oxygen and acetylene tanks or something. I was constantly putting everything back in the company. And to a degree, I still do. I make a good six figure income now, but what I pay myself is $30,000 a year. So it's not like I'm living some great lifestyle. I'm preparing for a retirement. The first, I'd say months that I was working I worked out of a 2006 Nissan Xterra. That's what I had. And it, had, it was so full of equipment and stuff, it would bottom out when I went over bumps. And I eventually, I couldn't get a small business loan, but I could get a loan for a van. We got a van and I outfitted that over time. I was able to get a wrap on it. That was some of the money I put back in the business. And I continued working by myself from home. After about two years, I rented a place, basically a storage place, and I bought a Pittsburgh and a brake and things like that to help make my jobs look better. And I kept it like that for a while and then we got our first shop and I started adding things like um, a forklift, some shelves and stuff to store things. And at that time we had two employees. We eventually moved to another place and got up as high as five employees. And I will tell you that I never made more money than when I worked by myself making money with employees as a small business 
can be difficult. It can be challenging. It's hard to get to the point where your employees make more money than it costs for you to hire them. I'll give you an example. Somebody who's making, say, $20 an hour may cost you $70,000 a year to hire. That's no joke. So you got to think long and hard before you hire somebody and be willing to put in the hours and the hard work and build the business to get to that point. Forgive me, my arms were getting tired. I should probably add that when we speak about employees, I've had some real good employees that I would hire again. But there's lots of people out there who just want to, they don't care about your company. They just want to milk you and your business for every penny they can get. They'll do jobs on the side, sell your free on. Yeah, that happens. You got to, uh, and they'll literally take your business and do that on the side. You have to be cautious, be careful who you hire. I have advised people, don't hire somebody because you need them. Hire the right person and then get the business for them. That's actually hard to do, but that sounds like it would be ideal. I do wish to get to the um, subject of income. I have worked for basically minimum wage, worked myself up to installing, and I was making about $10 an hour. I worked as a technician and began at 14 an hour. And when I started the business or when I seriously considered it, I was making like $18 an hour as a residential technician, basically running the company for somebody else. And then they suddenly saw me as a threat because I had a state license and fired me. So I had to either get another job or start a business. I had no customer list. I had no advertisements. I had nothing. So I went from $18 an hour to zero. And I guess I should discuss how I went from zero to making a really good six figure income. I basically started by knocking on rental company doors, getting to know the property managers, the owners of the company, introducing myself, shaking their hands and telling them I'm a good technician, I do good work, I'm working by myself, I'll work hard for your business and I would really appreciate it if you give me a chance. Just making that personal connection helped out a lot. And I'm still doing business with three of those companies and they probably give me 30% of the business I do. I also used home warranties and to a degree I still do a little bit. They do try to negotiate down on your price, but I've gotten to the point with them where they know the quality of my work and they have difficulty finding anybody around here who will work with them. So I just basically tell them, hey, this is my price and I continue to do business with them. I will also tell you that when I started, I tried having the lowest price in town. I thought $45 an hour would get me more business. That $45 an hour had no advantages, nothing. The only business that you get is going to be companies that just want the lowest price no matter what and you're not going to make any real money and they're not going to respect you because you got the lowest price in town. I've got to say that over the years that price has more than doubled. Around here a competitive rate is 70 an hour to 125. 
this is not a metropolitan area in places like Atlanta I realize the hourly rate is much higher but you got to adjust it to where you live another thing I'd like to add is if you're not good at saving money or managing your money this may not be the job for you or um, starting a business may not be for you I do realize that technicians and even duckmen they may want to open a business as a subcontractor installing and stuff like that and around here that's legal there are companies that don't like it they see that as somebody cutting in on their business but if you can't manage your money you're not going to make it because it is very seasonal for most people during the winter you may have some slow times and if you're not saving your money you're not going to make it now i would like to go over some of the qualities of a person that makes a really good business owner you need to be honest trustworthy dependable responsible drug free and willing to work hard i say responsible because if something's wrong or if there's if you made a mistake or something you have to go make it right nobody's going to be successful if they make a mistake or do something wrong and they don't make it right because that person will never call you again you got to make things right and also you don't have to know everything i didn't know everything when i started and, and i still don't i'll be the first to admit that i run across equipment that i haven't seen before and they're coming out with new high-tech equipment every day it's perfectly okay to tell your customer hey i need to do a little research on this please be patient with me if i can't get what i need right now i'm going to go home and find it but we'll get you taken care of they will more than respect you for that and they'll be willing to be patient they would rather know that you know what you're doing and that you've got it right than think that you're trying to wing it on some high dollar equipment so just be able to read the manual be responsible trustworthy you don't have to know everything you just have to be honest and trustworthy that goes a long way there's just so much that goes into being a business owner um, like keeping your overhead low you've got to do the accounting the billing and there's a lot that goes into it I just maybe I'll start a series on this discussing becoming a business owner and the things that we need to do because I do get a lot of questions about it but for right now I want to leave you with some words of encouragement if you cannot go a day without thinking about it you will kick yourself in the rear if you don't try one lesson I was taught was you don't know what you're capable of if you don't try I have a quote that's in a frame on my wall in my office that says the person who says it cannot be done should not interrupt the person doing it I was told by multiple people that I shouldn't start a business I'm gonna create hardship for me and my wife we basically started the business right after the that great recession but I did get some encouragement from some key people in my family I took that and I ran with it and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made my wife's been able to retire we've paid off our house we paid off all our vehicles we're financially very stable when before we were in debt so it can be done have some confidence in yourself 
and go after your dreams. Thanks for watching.